Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here, and welcome to another episode of the IT Business Podcast powered by NetAlly. And we are here for the weekly live show, Wednesday evenings, sometimes at 8 p.m., sometimes at 4 p.m., but at least for the foreseeable future, always on a Wednesday. So here we are, and tonight we are going to be talking all about TechCon Unplugged, one of the hidden gems of the channel, a conference that uh, we are in the fifth year. And it has been a conference that has been very near and dear to my heart. I've neglected talking about it, so I wanted to take a little time here and dedicate an entire show about that conference. And I've got a couple of people to help me with that, so I'm going to bring them out of the green room right now. We have Joe Kanosevic with Cyber Onsite Service. Joe, how are you? Hi. How are you doing today? Doing good. And let me also bring in Kyle Kenyon, Pro Tech Guy. Kyle, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Mark? All right. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. So I know we're going to talk TechCon, but let me go ahead and ask you guys, how's life? How is business? Great, Kyle. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, keeping busy, trying to make some uh, adjustments as not only personal life changes, but the uh, the business changes. So um, kind of rocking and rolling with that, enjoying the summer. Um, we got two kids under the age of five, so they're uh, keeping us busy. Um, and um, just kind of uh, enjoying the nicer weather. I know Marv is treated to that all the time, but not so much for us in uh, New England here. So. Well, I, I did get to spend a few days up there a few weeks ago, so I saw your weather. That's true. <laughs> uh, Joe, how was it up in the, the Midwest? I was in Indiana oh, yeah. last weekend, so I was close to you. You were down at IU, yeah. right? Yeah. IU, that's about uh, 150, 160 miles from me, something like that. Uh, uh, Indiana has been great. I mean, uh, business has been fantastic. Matter of fact, uh, for an old man, it's really been a little too much. So, <laughs> um, but I can't complain. I've been blessed, you know. Uh, I've been crazy busy but uh i'm getting by i have a uh, a guy that's coming to me to tech con with me he helps me a lot on projects and if i'm out of town he takes over for me for calls and different things like that so it's that's good you know and you guys and i think marvin you have met him before oh okay so, yeah did i like him and he liked me well i i, I hope so <laughs> <laughs> Because you know, like apparently <laughs> I've heard that I can I can turn some people off on no. the uh, on the first contact. Oh my God! <laughs> I mean, really, uh, if you've never been to TechCon, you want to come just to see you as the MC. Uh, <laughs> I'm not so sure about that, but thank you for the kind words. So, so let me just real quick for people that may not know, uh, TechCon Unplugged is the annual conference designated specifically for. IT business owners and managed service providers, the event aims to bring like-minded professionals in the IT industry together for a weekend of learning, networking, and business growth. And this is one of those conferences that was born out of a larger conference experience that we were at, I believe it was 2014 or 2015, a bunch of us were at one of the large conferences. I, I won't say the name this time. Uh, But I've said it before, and I'll probably say it in the future. But uh, for those of us that are smaller IT professionals, whether we're solo or just a few techs, uh, it was kind of a slap in the face to hear people on stage complaining that we were stealing their business and we don't belong in the industry. And, of course, I said, bah humbug to that. And uh, too bad the man in the van no longer exists. And uh, that was actually when that was was born and then of course the original version of TechCon the unconvention came out of that and we basically banded together and said hey we belong let's help each other out and uh, the conference continues uh, to go on today uh, this year it's going to be held September 12th through the 14th and it's going to be at the hotel at Urendale Preserve in Hanover Maryland basically right on the outskirts of DC 
Uh, so it's going to be three days there. Tickets are still available. I have no idea how many, but I do know that if you are able to sign up and get a ticket, uh, you can use uh, a code that I have. I'll have it listed in the show notes that you can get a little discount, I don't know, 75 bucks off the ticket price there. So be sure to use that. And if for some freaking reason you really, really, really want to go and money is an issue, reach out to me directly and we'll see if we can't get you there. If money is an issue, money is not the issue. So uh, reach out and let me know and we will get you there. So Joe, Kyle, you guys uh, – are veterans of the conference to some degree. Uh, I think, Joe, you missed last year for, for the I first did. time. I, I, that's correct. I had every intention of going, and some family matters came up, and I had to cancel. But, yeah, that's the first one I missed. All right. And, Kyle, you yeah. were there. Were you, you were the last two, right? Um, in spirit, I was there, but not in person. I also missed it as oh, well. Okay. Yeah. So here I am. I'm just reaching out to guys saying, "Let's talk about TechCon." <laughs> well, I can talk. Yeah, about we're the, the yeah ones. we're the last ones he picked. So yeah, okay. no, I, you were the first two actually. This is how great it worked out this week. So, uh, well, let me. I mean, I can of course you know give my comments on the conference and stuff, but I wanted to get you know some other people on, and I wanted to get people I hadn't had on before specifically when i do you know either the road to tech con or the voyage home uh wanted to get some different perspectives i'll do that uh, again after the conference but when you guys were there uh, i really want to talk about what the spirit of the conference was so in terms of your perspective you know one the reason you went in the first place and two what was it that made you come back um let's talk to that joe you've you've you know been in the long haul for us except for last year uh give us that perspective yeah I, yeah you're, you're exactly right marvin i've been there when when it was called the unconvention uh cory fruitman i think from yep. instant house call to to now and um you know one of the reasons that i like it it's 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 uh not large like uh the conference you just got done referring to comptia conference um, but it's more intimate. Um, you get a lot of time to spend um, with vendors, um, as really as much as you want, really. Um, and I just, for me, I like it because um, you know you're, you're in the grind every day, and sometimes when you, you get away for a few days with other techs, you can step back and take a look at your business from being away from it. And uh, I really get energized a lot of times, and that's when I usually come back with different uh, tools or, or things that I can use to, to make my business better or more secure, of course, today. Uh, but that's one of the reasons I like it. Uh, and I have a lot of people that I know now, since I've been around a while, uh, I've been around a while in a lot of ways. Gray hair is showing some... <laughs> To tell you one thing, but but uh, you know I've been in business now 15 years, and I uh, got a lot of friends and, and that come to that, and uh, it's good seeing people, you know, like you, Marv and Kyle. I don't I don't remember meeting you when you were there. I, I probably did, but don't remember. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we kind of crossed paths a little bit, but not enough maybe to you know no hard feelings at all there. So. Yeah, right, right. Busy, busy. All right, Kyle, when was your first time and what was, you know, the the reason that you actually decided to show up and be a part of it? Yeah, so um, my first time was, um, I think, maybe the first or only one in Michigan. Is that, was it their only one in Michigan? Yes. That was the first, yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, so that was the first time I went to that Um I think what made me kind of want to go to it was that so that would that was my first conference ever. So one of the things that came to mind when when Marvin asked me about this the, the whole thing the whole TechCon thing is what why why would you want to go to something like this? Is, is it for me? It was a really welcoming community to be able to go to my first conference. For me, it was it was something that was obtainable financially. It was easy to, 
to to handle. Um, and I felt like it was really kind of a small niche, like kind of community. Everyone's together, uh, just talking tech. So that's what really made it easy for me. And uh, I have to say, midway through that conference, I, I said I I would never want to miss one of these again. Um, unfortunately, I have, but it's it's not because I didn't want to go. So it's um, it's it's very. Uh, it's a very welcoming thing for new people. I know some people might be the same position I was in at that at that point in time, for a show or maybe new to the business and uh, looking for something to kind of get your feet wet. Um, it was a very eye opening experience for me. Yeah, I think one of the things that's always stood out for me is, you know, the large conferences are great to go to if you just want to see tons and tons of vendors. Uh, if you want to be entertained, I guess, and stay for the after parties and the and the the um, receptions. Well, I was <laughs> reception is one, but in a sense, the the presentations, I guess. You know, when you get to see some music stars, concerts, and stuff, and that's a big deal. But to be honest, that's not why I attend those conferences, mm -hmm. and it makes those conferences very expensive. And I was speaking with somebody earlier today. We were talking about attending one of the conferences later this year. And the comment was, you know, conferences are getting to be expensive. And for that type of money to go to a large conference, I mean, you have to know ahead of time if you know somebody going so that you can make plans to meet up and, and see them. Because otherwise you could be there for three days and mm -hmm. not even see them. So it makes it difficult, whereas a conference like TechCon, you're going to see everybody. You know, from the time you show up to the time you leave, you have the opportunity to stroll across the room and shake hands, rub shoulders, and chat, not just with the other attendees, but the vendors as well. Yeah, and I think, I think Marvin, you're hitting on something there that you go to those some of those other conferences and everything's at like a almost a high level where this conference brings it right down to getting dirty and understanding things my opinion you know you know you can go talk to somebody and and uh, the other ones are just uh, to me and you know, like uh, Kyle said it is very affordable you know you're fed uh, you eat well you drink and you can have a good time for not a lot of money you know and if you want to drive there it's even less money Yep. No, so, but and where are you from, Kyle? Um, I'm from Massachusetts. Oh, so, so uh, a ways away. Framingham, 20 minutes from Boston, 25 minutes. Yeah. yeah. So I want to make sure that I give a shout out to the people that put this on, uh, Paco and Rick, otherwise known as Taco and Slick Rick, uh, from the MSP Unplugged community, and they have. Uh, taken on the reins of putting this on and keeping it as uh, an affordable event that is educational and for the best way to explain it to me is uh, people friendly is probably one of the ways I like to talk about it. So for those that don't know, Pac LeBron uh, is with Prodigy Techs and Rick Smith is with Renactus Technology and both of them are I mean, they're they're considered veterans in the channel now, so uh, they help put together this conference, and it is literally designed by IT owners for IT owners, and uh, that's why it it really resonates with us because the people that are on the planning committee, they're us, you know, they're not some vendor, you know, sitting behind some conference you know doors trying to figure out what do MSPs want. Well. The only way you're going to know is if you ask them. Now, I should probably qualify that. Vendors probably do ask. <laughs> so I don't want a vendor yelling at me for saying that. But it, it's a little different when it's put together by your peers. And I think that's uh, one of the things that really uh, makes it great. Uh, Kyle, when you first showed up and you know the fact that you said you don't want to miss another one, even though you did, uh, what was probably a, a key takeaway that you remember that really 
stands out as to why you said that? Um, I think the value that I got from that show, like even if it's just like from learning, but even if you just take away from like just a financial standpoint, it easily paid for itself. I mean, many times over if you if you're if you're calculating up till now, even that first show that I went to, um, I think you can easily pay for your ticket. Um, so if you're just thinking of it from a financial standpoint, that's that's an easy wash for me. Um, but the second thing is the community. I think it's you know you have the planning committee and you have the people who run the show, but I also feel like everyone that's at this convention is is you're, you're almost like I don't want to sound too cliche about it, but you're like it's like you're part of the show, and that's because it's so interactive. You're not just you're not just buying a ticket to go watch a presentation and then you just sit there and watch, take notes, right? Um, I think your a lot of people bring value that you don't necessarily see maybe in the bigger shows, um, the more of like the the presentation type things. And of course we have those, but um, the the roundtable and hallway discussions type of things those are those are huge for me. Um, I think it's uh, that's what brings me to to something like this. All right, Joe, I'm sure that you and I have chatted about this, you know, over the years and stuff, but what what's the one thing, I guess, if you had to pick one that would stand out for you? Well, I don't know. I mean, there's so much, you know, Kyle hit on a lot of it there, you know, the value that you get from it, um, um, the relationships that you build, um, and like he said, the community, um, you know, I've had um, – the community say something on fa- Facebook or one of the groups and they said, Hey, I know a guy that can help you with that. You know, uh, and that's, that's where, you know, how, how, what's, what's the price you can put on that? You know, uh, and that's because I, I was, I was at the show and met him and talked to him and, and knew who he was. And, um, so I, I don't know if I could say there's one thing, but, uh, I think that, um, you know, the last time I was there, you know, the value of uh, the theme that at that time was security, which is, you know, back then's a big deal and today's a big deal. Um, so there's always some type of a theme in a way um, uh, for the conference. But uh, yeah, it's just the value of the money is a mere pittance right. to go, really, you know. Uh, you mentioned the networking aspect of it. Of course, that is huge when you can, you know, go into a room and know the majority of the people in the room, you know, or at least half. Uh, or you will go to one of these larger conferences and walk into a room and not know anybody. Uh, that is huge. Right. So I just attended. The reason I was in Indiana at IU was I was attending a National Junior Achievement Reunion Conference. And that conference has not happened since 1995, I think. But a bunch of us have gotten together over the years. The last time we were able to do this was uh, 2019 before COVID. So uh, there is a bunch of us that get together because that conference, it was a one-week conference per year. For Junior Achievement, and if you don't know Junior Achievement, it's an organization that teaches kids about business and economics. Uh, It was a company program, which was after school when I attended. And I was uh, fortunate to win Company of the Year, President of the Year, and then go to the National Conference and then attend later as a staff person. Uh, So I attended two years as a delegate and then nine years as staff. So we were talking about, and I've actually got a whole set of podcasts that I did for another show that I'll be releasing from uh, of all the interviews I did where we talked about what made that conference so special. And it was one of the things that it was very hard to describe to outsiders. But to each other, we knew exactly what it was because it was a conference that you could not see people for an entire year show back up. And get right into the groove of it and pick up, pick up right where you left off the year before. It was such an intense ride for that week or 10 days. And you worked side by side. I mean, it's, I, I know I'm, I'm rambling and people are like, 
dude, what's he saying? But <laughs> trust me, it's one of those things where I attended nine years of staff. Some of the people there attended 20, 25, 30 years. And listening to them reminisce about the conference and talk about what's happened since then, some of these people are such good friends that they've attended each other's weddings. They've, you know, you know, known each other's kids as they've grown up. They've attended, you know, events, flown across the country. They visit with each other year after year. They know each other and to some degree better than the people they went to school with, the people they grew up with. Uh, it's just something you can't explain. I say all of that to say this. The TechCon conference, the MSP Unplugged community, going back to Podnuts days, is that type of community for us, I think, where when, when you're sitting in your office – and you're like, man, I've got a problem. I got to figure out, you know, what to do. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not looking for somebody local to help. And a lot of times you're not calling the vendor. You're calling somebody in this community That's or emailing correct. or texting or whatever. And you know what? They answer. Yep. yep. And they're all always part, willing, right? always willing to help. Yep. And I am too. I think there's there's one one big thing about the community here too to speak on that is there's someone if you're not if if let's say let's say ubiquity is not your specialty there's someone in the group that their specialty is ubiquity and insert vendor product here there's somebody out there that's that's a that's an expert in it that's most likely in this community or they know somebody who is and I think that's huge like it's where where to if you're just don't have somebody to help you through something like that or somewhere to reach out. It's a it's a very tough position to get out of. But when you have a group like this, somebody knows somebody at least. So Yeah, it's especially Go ahead, Joe. Especially for a solopreneur. Yeah. You, you, you know, I mean, um, if you have 10 employees, you know, there's usually somebody that's an expert on something there, but when you're by yourself, you need to bounce something off of people sometimes. So yeah, yeah. I was going to say it's a little different than a peer group. Now, in a, you know, peer groups are usually small. You've got people, and you do share, you know, business ideas and strategies and bounce stuff off of each other. But sometimes your peer group is limited as to what they have access to or knowledge. Yes, they may have people to refer to, but when you've got a community as big as you know, MSP unplugged, you know, few hundred people strong, and you multiply that by all the people they know, you know, you've got thousands of opportunities to find somebody who can help you with a product or service or a problem and anything like that. So very good. Uh, let me shift to the vendor side because of that's one of the things that always comes up is most of the conferences, the vendors – not only pay for, but they drive the content. Uh, this conference a little different. Uh, yes, we do have some of them that are sponsoring and paying, but they're not driving what happens at this conference. So let me ask your guys' uh, opinion and viewpoints on how you've, you know, perceived the vendors, not just, you know, by, you know, being able to talk with them, but their presentations and how they are while they're at the conference. I'll go first. Um, so, are you talking about strictly related to to, to this conference? Yes. And, yes. Yeah. Um, I've I've like now I don't have a ton to compare it with, but from from my standpoint, it's I never felt really that the vendors were pushy or salesy. I felt like there were a lot of times, um, and maybe there's some vendors that don't fit this mold, but a lot of times they were available to answer questions and. And you know, even if you gave them a tough question, they were there to to, to answer that. Um, there's a lot of vendors that are really great at that. Some that were maybe still learning that aspect of the show. Um, and as far as content, um, I felt like it was so far like pretty good content. I just maybe like I wanted more of it. But you know, there's only you know it's only so long. So uh, at least that's kind of my overhead of it. Yep, Joe. Yeah, I, I um, the 
the vendors are um, uh, again it's 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 more intimate again that it's not as large as some of the bigger conferences so you have time to to talk to them um, I try to visit every one of them um, it, you know I know that they they're there and they pay something to be there so you want to try to use them if you can <clears throat> if they have something that that you can can use so I I attempt uh, to do that um, but I don't I don't feel every time I've been to one I didn't feel anybody was pushy at all you know they just they'll talk to you and you know hey give us a call if you're interested you know sometimes afterwards you still get the, the calls afterwards I mean that's just a given uh, you know they're gonna grab all the names that were there they're gonna give you a buzz to follow up but but the, while you're there I don't I don't feel that they're they're pushing anything on you they just want to a- answer your questions and that's what I like yeah. So. Yeah, it's a little different when you're not having your badge scanned every few feet, right? Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. It's a tough one. I mean, I know they got to do it. They've got to. They've got to show a, yeah. a return on investment for going there and and yeah. that sort of stuff. But it is, it is nice to just not feel that pressure. You yeah. know, to, to just go up and talk and feel like, hey, let me ask a question. And as long as you're not worried about whether or not, you know, I'm qualified or not. Right. Um, that has helped. I mean, some of these vendors, I, I think, and specifically the ones that have come to this, you know, more than a few years, they get it. They understand that, I don't want to say reputation, but the fact that the more that they can help us, regardless of whether they use or we use their product or not, the better it's going to be. You know, we're going to remember the vendors that helped us, mm-hmm. you know, even if they, you know, aren't our vendor. If they've got an idea to help us in our business or if they're willing to guide us to another vendor that would be more suitable. That's, you know, it's like the old Macy's thing in the Christmas story or whatever that show was. What was that movie? <laughs> I believe. I believe. <laughs> a few more of the lyrics. Go ahead. Yeah. Miracle yeah. on 34th Street, right? Okay. Is that sure. it? You know, I, I can tell you, I just reached out to one of the vendors that was there that I was there two years ago. Yeah. You know, looking at, you know, because I remember them being there. I was interested in what they had. But at the time, I didn't. Um, use them, but I've called and and I'm probably going to pull the trigger on them, you know. And uh, you know, I told them where I saw them, and I think they're coming this year. Also, do you want to say their name? We can check. Solution Solutions Granted. They will. Yeah. Yep. Solutions Granted. Uh, I don't know if Michael's going to be there or if it's Big Boy Brian, but, or Lisa Loco. But it shows him on the website uh yeah Michael but career michael cream, green, green, green. Green. yeah but he's yeah. well we'll yeah. see yeah you know he's he's all gobbled up in the sonic wall ecosystem now but uh he'll be I mean, there I think that that's a, something that really is like like joe said it's, it's something that he didn't fit him at the time but I think I remember Susan's Granite, and I, I actually loved their presentation. Um, it wasn't something I needed or used at the time. But you do remember them for, for that and what they brought, what value they brought to the show. And I think that that speaks to, uh, I mean, any vendor out there that's looking to do the right thing, that's what you do. You want to bring value to the show. And then here, here's Joe two years later. They didn't sell Joe the two years ago. But they just might do it now, and right. that's in part because of the uh, the reputation they have and the impression that they made at the time. Yep. So, you know, Marvin, the go ahead, Marvin. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, you, you you know the conference you mentioned right off the the, the beginning. I remember going to that, and, and there's a ton ton of vendors there. Yeah. But it, it's like I felt like a fish out of water. It's like if I wasn't a million plus, 
I didn't feel like they ain't interested in me. You know, where here I come and, and you know, they just, you are who you are and, hey, can we help you? So, um, yeah. I, I, yeah. So I was going to make a comment earlier and I was debating on how far I should go with this. But let me just say that I know probably 60 to 70 percent of these vendors and I've heard of them all. I mean, I do know them all. But in terms of my dealings with them, I've talked to about 60 or 70 percent of them. And these are vendors that I would say have good vendor etiquette. Meaning that whether they're the right fit for us or not, they're not going to make us feel bad about it. And they're not going to make us feel less than if we're not in a certain you know type of category for them, whether it's a million plus or whatever. Um, I mean, solutions granted, you know, that were mentioned earlier. I mean, you just need to sign up with one thing. You know, yeah, right. There's not a right. huge minimum. Now, I'm not going to say that for some stuff there shouldn't be a minimum. That's, you know, I'm not judging that. But the fact that Solutions Granted has made it a point of saying, yeah, you don't need to have a minimum with us. Just just one is all it takes. Um, I mean, I can talk about Super Ops, Monjour, you know, Tech Marketing Engine. I use Threat Locker. I'll, I'll say this. I've been a Pax8 partner since 2016, I haven't bought one thing from them. Uh, I use, I use <laughs> Pax 8. Yeah, right. Great, great. Um, Total was very good when I've dealt with them. Uh, I am, I say, I do use ScalePad. And who else on there? So, but, but all of these, at least as far as I know, have all, you know, been good vendors in the channel. There's one vendor that I, I actually... You know what? I'm going to say it, and I'm going to get some heat for this. <laughs> but so I got a call today from a rep at a vendor that I use because my rep left, and this was the new person calling, and they wanted to introduce themselves. And I said, okay, not a problem. I actually picked up the phone and talked to the person for a couple minutes, and I tried to let them know that, listen, I just went through all of the stuff for my stack. Uh, I actually removed a couple of products, which were substantial monies for them. So it was noticeable when I removed those products. Uh, I still have some other products. I actually have a meeting with uh, another division of that company in a couple of weeks because I do want to upgrade Another product that I have with them, I've got about 10 items that are coming to end of life soon, and I want to upgrade those, which means I would stay with the vendor. Now, obviously, I wouldn't stay at the level that I was before, but I would stay with them. And, But I'll be honest, I've been pulling stuff from this vendor just because of the way that uh, they've acted over the last year or so. And I'm sure people are starting to guess who that vendor is. Um, and I, 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 I'm kind of treading water because I have a feeling that my, my new rep is listening to the show <laughs> because one of the things that he's like, oh, I heard you have a podcast. What is it? So I told him the name of the podcast. But later on, as I'm trying to get off the phone and he's trying to ask me questions and all of this stuff and he's really digging in deep, I'm like, Dude, you're not understanding. I'm set. I'm good. And he's like, all right, so how are you planning on growing your business? And at that point, you know, I had said no politely a few times. And at that point, I'm like, look, I'm trying not to be rude or blunt here, but you don't need to know that. I felt bad, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm trying to get off the phone. Let me go. And you don't need to know how I run my business. But sorry about that. <laughs> I just, no, I, yeah, you had to vent. I think we've all had the calls. Yeah, yeah. it's um, yeah. it's an awkward position to to be in, and it's just you yeah. know, try to get out of it, whatever it may be. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. it's tough. And, I, and like I said, I, I try not to bash on vendors, but sometimes you just 
got to. But let's let's bring some sanity to this. There's a a message here in the chat. You may not be looking to change part of your stack when you meet a vendor at a conference, but things can certainly change a few months or even years down the road. Yep. Thank you, Lady Die. Yeah, that's for sure. Which is what happens a lot. You remember those good interactions. You remember the vendors. And, yeah, needs change. Sure. So. I think, I mean, even, for example, I think we've probably all changed something since the first time we went to one of these conferences, right? I mean, that's, I mean, it's it's bound to happen. Something changes, whether you the, the company changes and you don't like how things are run anymore or you need something different or more capable for what you're doing in your business. I think it's it's always something that you're, you're keeping on your radar. Well, the whole idea is that if you're progressing in your business or, you know, the term they all want to hear is if you're growing in your business and you're adding endpoints and adding clients, well, of course, uh, what you started with may not scale with you to the level that you need or as you add services and you find a better fit because it does more of a certain thing or it integrates better with another thing. Uh, that happens. That's. I'll be honest. My first RMM, I still have because I haven't found anything that integrates with the rest of my stack. But if I change that RMM, I have to find two other products to add to my stack because that RMM integrates with a couple of packages. It's one of those weird things. Um, and of course, there's you know, Kaseya wants you to bundle with them, but it's they're not a fit for me right now. So well, I know Paco and Rick put their heart and soul in this. That's for sure. Yes, you know, for the conference Absolutely, to be yeah. successful, and and like I said, if nothing else, you want to come. Anybody listening to just see Marvin as an MC, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's not a reason to go to a conference, but I'll uh, <laughs> I'll You'll entertain take a compliment. It as much as yeah. we can. So let's let's go ahead and real quick. If I mean, even with all the stuff that has been said, if there was somebody that you, you know, were talking to for the very first time, or somebody reached out and said, "Hey, I heard you talking about the conference, but man, I, I don't know. Is there is there one?" more bit of advice that you would actually say, you know, to them to say, look, this is, you know, yes, all of that's good, but this is why you need to go. Anything that you guys can think of that would be that extra icing on the cake? Yeah, I can, I can think of something, I think, and it, it almost might go into another part of this, this, this podcast, but there's one, one particular moment I remember it was it was after the conference we were at Dave and Buster's, which uh, if you're not familiar is a uh, it's basically like if TJ Fridays and Chuck E. Cheese were the same thing, um, and it's we were sitting in our room we had a nice private room, um, and I was talking to Tom Bull, which I think both of you guys are probably familiar with, um, very active in the community, always always there to help. Um, and he said, oh, so what do you do for computers, like endpoints? And I said, oh, I build all my own. Okay. And I, I mean, I literally would hand build everything. So, and I was like, there's no way anything's going to be better than building my own thing. And I was really in this thing because he says, how much time do you spend building it? And we went through all the numbers and stuff. And he said, just buy a Dell or a Lenovo or whatever, whatever HP and take all that time back and buy a warranty for it. And at the time, I was like, oh, yeah, sure, that's, you know, that sounds good. And I, I didn't necessarily think the idea was going to work for me. But when I made that change, so much time opened up and it made things so much easier, not only for me. And, you know, we can talk margins and all that other stuff. But the fact that if anything goes wrong with that computer, the way I run things is Lenovo's there the next day to fix it. So it's, I couldn't fix it any faster if I wanted to. Um, so that one thing has, has I don't even I don't know what to equate to it as a number, but it's just 10 times over has, has 
made me want to go to this conference. Um, it pays for it, all this other stuff, whatever. However angle you want to look at it, and it it makes a an easier experience for my customer and an easier deployment for myself. Um, and then maintenance all down the road, all that stuff. So I think that's one of the big things, and that didn't even happen in the conference. That happened at like literally like an mm. after dinner conversation at an arcade. Okay, so. I talk about these hallway conversations in the, the community, and I think that really sums it up. Is just one of those things that just it's that happened, and that's real, and that's I think that happens all the time, and we probably all have our own stories about that. But it, that's a huge thing for me. I I had a very you know a very similar experience where I used to. Uh, it seems like every time I went to buy a switch, I was just buying a switch you know i would try this i would try that and then i was talking to and everybody probably knows john dubinsky and you know we were just sitting again not in the conference having a beer and he sat me down and he says joe have you ever thought about standardizing he said why learn all these different things at waste time and he it's like duh He's right. You know, you know, I use Dells. I use Ubiquity. You know, I have standardized. I just don't, you know, I'm not going to change unless I have to change, basically, when it comes to hardware. And, and Kyle, uh, I used to do the same thing with building computers, and I still do it for customers that want a custom computer. But sure. yeah. they're time-consuming as heck. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, so. But you never, the thing is, you you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't click until somebody says it to you. Hmm. You're right. Yep. And, and I've and by God, I'm not perfect by any means. I mean, I'm a mess. You know, <laughs> compared to probably most of you guys, but I make it work. You know, in my business. Yep. So here's another tip that I just started doing, probably in the last two months. So not just with, you know, building and prepping computers and stuff, but the whole delivering the system to the client, setting it up, blah, blah, blah. So this client that I've been working with, they're primarily laptops. But I would always have the laptops at my office where I could prep them, put my agent on and stuff, and then I would drive out there, connect it to the network, do you know, it's a 30 minute drive to the client. And then I'm there 30 minutes to an hour connecting it to the network. And then of course the 30 minute drive back. So I'm there, you know, two hours most of the time, if not more. And I had been thinking about this before, but I thought it was such a ridiculous thing to do. But there was one day where I'm like, I got to do it. I don't have time to drive over there. I don't have time to do this. Uber. I selected Uber package delivery. They showed up at my office. I handed them the laptop box. They drive over, give it to the client. The, all the clients had to do is open it up, plug it in, and I can remote in and finish the stuff. And that alone in drive time saved me an hour. Yeah. You know, apart from everything else. So, you know, any little thing to get back time mm-hmm. is huge because while I'm driving, you, you can't do anything. You know, you can talk on the phone. You, know? yeah, you can't do invoices. You shouldn't be anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm not saying somebody hasn't tried it. but <laughs> So all those things in terms of time, the, the building computers, I built computers as well. I was building them for my law firms. Until I got to the point where I realized, you know what, I'm spending way too much time doing this. And this was right when I was getting into some of the networking stuff and, you know, setting up multi-office connections. And I'm like, I need to be spending time on all this other stuff. And they're willing to pay for the warranty, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why not do it? And yes, you know, and, and for me, it was great, too, because at the time, my one client had three offices you know one was here in fort lauderdale one was in orlando one was in tampa 
well, I'm certainly not driving to Orlando or Tampa just to you know, repair a computer. So having HP warranty on those systems, I mean, I had a power supply one time that I was able to have HP take care of, and I didn't have to worry about driving four hours to deal with that. So, yeah, anything you can do to, to get back time, all those tips, you know, standardizing, uh, having manufacturer, you know. Support. Support. Um, from start to finish, you know, not just support, but think about it from the sales perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've got to buy, you know, multiple machines and, you know, you can give them a call and find out what deals they have, what models match what you have. I mean, I remember spending hours researching specs. I ain't got time for that. I remember with uh, one of the companies that's not, I know we offered them to come to the conference, but, um, when I was new to Intermedia, um, my sales rep said, "Hey, hey, Joe, if you get, you know you got a customer, call me and I'll get on the phone with you. You know, we'll do a conference call." And and he did. And you know, he's the expert. I'm not the expert yet because I wasn't selling that much of it. You know, I have become more of an expert. I don't know if I'll ever be an expert at it, but but that's what you want. You know, they're the ones that can help you sell it, and and they did. You know, I got, you know, I don't know, 21 phones or something like that in a business. That's not not bad, you know, for the commission. Yeah. So that's what you want. Like I said, the vendors, vendors matter. Yes, they do. Well, speaking of vendors, let me do this. Let me say thank you to the vendors that are helping to sponsor this show. Of course, I mentioned at the beginning that the show is powered by NetAlly. Uh, you can simplify network testing with rapid, reliable tools for seamless connectivity and instant visibility. Trust your network with the industry's leading handheld solutions. Uh, you've seen me drinking from a cup if you're watching the live show. This mug is sponsored by SuperOps. And uh, unlock your MSP potential, streamline your operations, elevate your service, SuperOps is your all-in-one platform for managed success. And we also have a supporting sponsor here, TrueGrid. They offer managed service providers a streamlined solution for remote desktop access. Empower your clients with seamless, secure remote access. No firewalls needed. And, of course, uh, head over to the website, folks. Click on Sponsors. You'll see all the links there. Uh, There are other sponsors that support the show in other areas, and we appreciate them, and we're trying to do partnerships with them, so support them, uh, idbusinesspodcast.com slash sponsors. And, of course, if you just want to support the show yourself, uh, you can become a Patreon, but probably the best way is to use my Amazon store link. If you head over to the website, there's an Amazon tab at the top. You click that. Better yet, you save it as your home link to Amazon, and anytime you shop, Amazon will give a commission on anything that you purchase. No change to you. They take care of it all, and that is a good way to support the show. Uh, so all of that is great. And, of course, Super Ops also sponsors our Florida Man segment. And... I'm not going to make you guys do a Florida man challenge, but I do have a great thing to say about the state of Florida. It is not as crazy as you might think, but Florida has recently been ranked as the second best state to live in the nation. Yeah, I said it, and I've got documentation to prove it. According to a recent Wallet Hub study, Florida has been ranked as the second best state to live in America for 2024. Driven by its strong performance in areas like quality of life, (laughs) safety, (laughs) and economic opportunities. I'm sorry. The safety one just gets me. Right, right, right. Uh, But uh, so there were five key dimensions. So... Uh, It was affordability, economy, education and health, quality of life, and safety. We ranked 10th in safety, by the way. Uh, So I will have a link to that. But 
Uh, it's interesting with the guests that I have on the show. Do you know which state ranked higher than Florida? Ranked higher than Florida? Yeah, Florida was number two. Which state was number one? Mm, how about Texas? No. Huh? Massachusetts. I, I guess. Really? Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. I don't so, know which, uh, the Onion article this is from, but I don't know. But you guys had a fifty-fifty <laughs> shot. I was just in both of your states. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> well, well, which one or, did you like better, Mark? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Listen, they're both great states for very different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Actually, I didn't spend a lot of time in Boston when I was there, so I'll have to come back and visit again. Uh, probably, I don't know, 2027, maybe? Always out. <laughs> I'll pencil you in. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Um, that's pretty much it. I didn't want to burden you down with questions or stuff. Any any other comments that you may have uh, thought about from TechCon that we should mention? Get a ticket and come to the show, to the conference. All right. And if you're listening to the show, make sure you tell Paco and or Rick uh, that we talked about them. Gave them good reviews here. So get you guys to come out. So, TechConUnplugged.com, again, September 12th through the 14th, and tickets are very reasonable at $349. Uh, everything's included. Well, shouldn't say everything. You, you still got to pay for your travel and your hotel, but while you're there, once you're there, you don't have to worry about food. You don't have to worry about entertainment. Uh, the food is a plus plus for those of you that remember. So, but uh, use the code in the show notes and get yourself 75 bucks off. Or if you're truly hurting, reach out to me and let's see if we can't get you there. So, all right, guys, thank you very much for coming and hanging out. Thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks for having us. All right. So, again, Joe Knosevic, Cyber On Site Service, and Kyle Kenyon, Pro Tech Guy, uh, Massachusetts and Indiana represented. So uh, I am going to end the show the same way we started. I'm going to play a video, which is a 2023 recap. I apologize to those of you that might be listening back on audio only because you will not hear the promo video. And the reason is because it's a minute and 49 seconds long. So I'm not going to have that be an intro outro. So you'll hear, you'll hear the regular intro and outro. But if you want to see the video, uh, there will be a link to head over to one of the social medias, and you can watch it there. But that's going to do it here uh, for our show. Uh, we try to be here every Wednesday at some form or fashion. Uh, check out our website for additional resources and past episodes. If you enjoyed today's discussion, I never really asked for this, but I'm going to say it now. Leave a review and uh, share the podcast with your friends. And uh, your support will help me reach more IT professionals like us and get more people coming to TechCon. So that's going to do it for tonight. On behalf of Joe and Kyle, I want to say thank you for watching and or listening. we we'll see you next time. And until then, holla. <laughs>